So the flagstone series has been focusing on a very strict definition of flagstone tessellation, where absolutely all of the space is covered by twists and there are these um, little, I guess, tiling lines between them. But there's a lot of tessellations, and I'm going to go through a whole stack of my own designs, that are flagstone-ish. That use some elements of flagstone design, but go and do their own thing. So this one doesn't quite count as a flagstone because it has these gaps where these are not triangle twists, they're just floors between these rhombus twists. And actually stick around until the end of the video, we're going to see on this crease pattern how we can tell in the crease pattern that things are going to line up this way. So flipping to the next. This one's flagstone-ish because it's got these just rhombus star shapes, but then they don't all line up with each other and actually their tips overlap. This one is flagstone-ish because it's got these rectangles which are actually um, hybrid hexagons and they line up this way but not quite this way. And there's actually like flat foldability constraints that prevents it from lining up all the way. So that's kind of cool. And it's flagstone-ish on the other side too, because those triangles are all in a line without them being directly connected to each other. And then coming on to the next one, um, we've got this structure that is one twist choice off from being a flagstone. So if I had chosen closed trapezoids instead of open trapezoids in these positions, it would have been a flagstone. But instead, there's a little gap between things. We've still got some flagstone stuff going on in the middle. Uh, but this is the kind of thing where I might go back and do another version that's exactly flagstone. Um, this one has the start with flagstone squares, and then it switches and uses open squares on the back instead of closed in certain positions, and it's going to repeat out in these other locations. So starts flagstone, it's dense like a flagstone, but is not actually flagstone, although it does have some twists with borders right next to each other on either side of the paper. Then this one has those very flagstone elements, the trapezoids around the hexagon, but they're spread apart from each other. And actually that that's not a floor. That's another twist. But uh, yeah, you never know what I'm going to pull out of my hat. So next up, this one, and it's close relative over here. So Synergy and Syzygy use these three trapezoids in a flagstone way. And the surprise is they're the same on the back too. Like, this is, this is crazy. Um, and yeah, you, you can really have fun with how you pattern things. If you don't care, um, if th some things are on the front and others are on the back. And then we get into the Whirlpools series. So Whirlpools, this is very much like a flagstone, but it's missing the hexagon in the middle. So each of these are disconnected. Um, it's not going straight between one and the other like lens stars. So in lens stars, the triangle and the rhombus share a pleat. In whirlpools, they do not. Um, and you can do variants on that. You can do this double whirlpools where the rhombus is only covering half of the triangle edge. That's kind of trippy as well. Um, there's 
yeah, so, so many variations that you can do that are almost flagstone, but not quite. This one starts off the same in the center as the first one that I showed with those um, triangular blank spaces instead of twists, and then it feeds off <laughs> with this extra long hexagon um, to connect to the next set, and there's actually a um, mixed up threefold uh, hexagon on the back to bring everything together. Uh, then Bubbles has these hexagons um, that are all hanging out next to each other, but it's not a flagstone because there's these blank spaces in between, and also because there's pleats that directly connect the hexagons. Constellation um, is another one that uses the star rhombus from, or the star of six rhombi from the just rhombi flagstone. So all of these have the same start. And then it goes and puts double depth close triangles <laughs> instead of the triangles closer in. Um, this one does put the triangles closer in, but then instead of putting the next rhombus here, it puts it this way. And so you get those triangle gaps there as well. Um, and yeah, you can, you can just really have fun with this structure and do all kinds of things. Um, you can even do that just rhombi structure with mixed depth rhombi. Uh, and you can even fold this straight from the grid without pre-creasing. It's hard as heck, but you can do it. Um, or I should say I can do it. <laughs> um, but again, these little triangle gaps, it's not quite a flagstone, but it's in that general vicinity. And then you can kind of explode the star and then leave the uh, rhombi next to each other. Just so many different things that you can do with this pattern. Um, you can also have hexagons and triangles up close next to each other. This is my knotted web tight. And this one is the same on the back. Like, kind of wild that you can have these things be the same on both sides, but it's totally possible. Uh, and then there's this little guy that has some of the edges fully covered and then other edges half covered. I've got a whole series of half adjacent tessellations. So squares, triangles, hexagons, rhombi, um, squares with like this closed kind of hole, um, hexagons with that closed kind of hole. You can't do it with triangles. Um, well, you can try. Tell me if you find something that I didn't. Um, and yeah, there's, there's a lot of different options. So now that we're like at the end of the stack, let's take a look back at that first one, which I call paved. And let's take a look at the crease pattern for this. So when we're looking at the crease pattern, and we're looking for um, places of alignment. We're trying to figure out like, okay, what's going to line up with what when we actually fold it? The first thing that I generally look for is what's going to end up in the center of a triangle. So this hexagon corner is going to end up in the center of the triangle because it is exactly the same distance and direction opposite of the center relative to this fold line. And for the same reason, this corner of this rhombus is also going to end up in the middle of the triangle. And we can say the same thing about this upper corner of the hexagon in this triangle and this pointy corner of the rhombus. So if this edge of the hexagon is going between this triangle center and that triangle center and this edge of the rhombus 
is going between those same two triangle centers, well then those two edges are going to line up. And there's, um, yeah, that, that's really the tool that I'm using. I'm looking at some fold, looking on either side of it, seeing what's going to land where on the opposite side. And um, yeah, it's easiest with closed triangles. You can also um, get some alignments with open triangle twists. So this is a open hexagon with open triangles at that same really skinny spacing um, that we have the closed triangles in here. And then instead of closed rhombi, which if I used a closed rhombus here, the tip would come there, which does not line up with anything else with the other corner still here. But with the open rhombus, it comes out to where that open triangle hole would have its corner if I wasn't taking paper away from it. And so that is going to be exactly lined up with this corner of the neighboring rhombus. And so you can get some more sophisticated alignments um, when you're looking at different kinds of twists. But yeah, it's really all about like what is on the other side of this fold? Where will it end up after this fold is folded? And so that is the story of like almost, almost flagstone stuff and how you can see that it's going to do that even without folding anything, without putting it in origami simulator either. So happy folding and I will see you next week.